In this first video, we'll set up our project and start setting out the construction lines for our parameter-driven bookcase design. I will start by going to the control panel here and activating the project by double-clicking. This will now ensure that all designs that I create are contained in this project. If you're not sure how to create these projects or need more information on managing your project, we have an introductory course called Getting Started with Modeling in Fusion 360 that dives deeper into this aspect of the software. With my project now activated, I'm going to close this panel and I'm going to close this design. And it will immediately give me the option to start a new one. I could also go here to the file drop down and click on new design. With a new file created, I'm going to start setting up the project for this bookcase design. Now the first thing I want to do when I start a new design like this is create a new component. Each part of this design is going to be a separate component and the reason for this is that it allows us to lay all of the different parts flat when we're ready to set it up for the CNC machining. To create this component, I'm going to right click here where it says unsaved at the moment. This is the top level of our design browser where I can get an overview of all the different parts of my design. I'm going to right click and say new component and you'll see down here it created a new component. I'm going to click on it twice and call this bookcase side. The other reason I do all of my parts as separate components is every action that you do in Fusion 360 is recorded as an action down here on the timeline. And by creating these components, I'm confining the actions of everything that makes up this component in this folder. So it just creates a much cleaner timeline at the bottom where if I would create everything under the main project every single action that I do would be on the timeline at the bottom. So it's not essential but it does create a much cleaner timeline and it makes it easier to manage the actions. Now that the component's created I can go ahead and create the first line. Now because this component is active at the moment you can see it's blue and you can also see there's a dot here that says it's active anything that I draw or create now will be inside this component. Up here on the sketch panel I can click on line or use the shortcut key which is L and once I click on that it's going to give me this option to choose a plane that I want to draw on. Now I'm going to start by drawing on the right side of this bookcase and that is shown to me by this view cube up here so you can see that's the right side and if I choose this plane it will rotate so that I face that one straight on. I'm going to zoom out a bit just to give myself a bit more space. Now in my case my project is set up to use millimeters so I just want to move this around a bit to open up more drawing space. And then I'm going to start sketching out what I call the scaffold or the, the construction lines for this design. And the reason I do this is in most parametric programs I like to create a scaffold first and then add the parameters to that and then later on draw my actual geometry over that. So what I'm doing here is just creating a number of lines that I know I'll need later and you can see at the moment as I'm creating these areas it's actually seeing it as enclosed spaces and assuming that at some point I want to turn this into geometry that is why it's highlighting. Now I want all of these to be construction lines. So what I'm going to do is select it, right click on it, and click here where it says normal construction, or I can use the shortcut which is X. And once I do that, you'll see that they're now construction lines and those solid areas disappear as well. Now the next step is to start creating the parameters that I'm going to use to drive this design. I'm going to move up here to parameters, click on it, and then I'm going to add a new user parameter by clicking on this little plus sign here. The first one that I want is thickness. This is going to be the thickness of my plywood, and when I get to the point where I'm going to run it through the CNC machine, I want to be able to change it based on the actual measurements that I take before I run the machine. And we'll start this one with 16 millimeters. Okay then I also want the height of this 
we'll start with 1.8 meters I want the width and this will all be changed later but for now it's just values that I start with and then also the length of this bookcase and for now I'm just going to make that one meter and OK and close it. Now to add those parameters I'm going to create a dimension. So we'll start with the height I'm going to say from the center point here to the stop construction line it's going to be that distance and if I start typing it gives me a prediction there of values from my user parameters so I'm happy with that one I'm just going to press enter and enter again and it will change next I'm going to do the width so from this line to that center line is going to be width divided by 2 and the reason for this is I'm building half the this side now and then I'm going to mirror it over to the other side it's like that and then finally to set values that I want to put in from the center to this line I want 150 and from this line to that line I also want 150 So this is the scaffold around which we will build our geometry and we've added those parameters to it and in the next lesson we'll look at testing those parameters just to make sure that they work the way we expect them to and then we'll build the geometry and link it to those construction lines.